baby. Hello, na kupenda sana. Hello, mama. Hello, what you feel? Me, 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 me. Hello, na kutaka sana. Oh, mama. Hey, mazi. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Asante sana for joining us for another classic episode of the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. We have a great show lined up for you, Mazi. Sai kwanza naona wa Kenya mumeamua hakuna wiki itapita without our Deputy President, His Excellency Rigiji. Haja trend, Mazi. Kwanza this week, the truthful man was on the spot for many things, but let's uh, focus on this dancing style. Maze, some people are making fun of that video, but you underestimate the amount of effort you need to dance with just your neck. You know, the president is the head of the country, alafu Rigiji is the neck. Haters wanna say, Rigiji can shake any other body part. Handshake is where he draws the line. <laughs> hey, Maze. Now, before to end in Bali, this week, in the same event, President Ruto was treated to how unserious Kenyans can be. While speaking, kwa hiyo event, Rigiji alikuwa na dance, mse ali approach president. Akamuliza kama anaweza msaidia na namba ya governor Sisi Limbariri. Nilikuwa na keti hapo chama mwingine akaniambia si unisaidie namba ya huyu mama. Nikamwangalia, nikamwambia wewe unataka kusimama? Akasema hapana. Huyu mama kwani ameolewa? <laughs> Please. Huyo ni bibi ya mtu. So Nyenye vijana wa Jenny story wewe kama unatafuta simu ni kwa sababu unataka kusimama kura hata wajana na mambo mengine Mimi kwanza nimekuwa mapo kwa vile president aliminyima namba ati, ati unataka kusimama hapana <laughs> wewe huyo ni bibia wenyewe Now I thought angesema yes nataka kusimama ndio angeambiwa wewe huyo ni bibia wenyewe <laughs> Eh manze Eh manze but you are pia yuko serious everybody knows that the only number president anapea watu saini 3% Imagine, imagine na vile maisha ni ngumu, mzee anapata nafasi ya kwenda kuongea na president, alafu anaomba hook up. <laughs> Does not make sense. And th that was in Narok uh, where the president also reiterated his support for women in leadership in a very special way. Na mimi ni supporter mkubwa ya kina mama. Na endeleeni hivyo eh si mmesikia chairman wetu wa chama ni mama anaitwa eh huyo mrembo huyo Eh? Anaitwa Sisi Limbarire. Huyo ndio chairman wa chama na mumesikia. Chairman wetu ni mama. <laughs> Anaitwa Sisi Limbarire. President ana support akina mama mpaka anawapatia kazi ya kukuwa wanaume. Now an erivo president alinyima huo mse namba because imagine at inge happen alafu unasikia mse anasema eh hey, buda unajua ndio bwana ya chairman. <laughs> But jokes aside, Mazi Embu Governor Sisi Limbarire is one of the most down-to-earth politicians you'll ever meet in this country. Take it from me. In other news, a young man from Kisumu was on the news for innovating a shoe that can play music. He, unayona apa, na ita current flow screen. He inazuia, waya zikishikana usiweze kuchomeka inazuia inazuia usiweze kuchomeka miguu hii hapa hii ndio control system ya mziki unaweza cheza mziki yako hapa uweke pause uweke next uweke play na pia unaweza kuweka USB ama pia unaweza charge unaweza charge kiatu hiki na hapa mi hiyo waya kuchoma miguu angeiacha ndio wasio kuona eh buda uko na kiatu moto Eh wazi. Eh. Hizo pia tu kwanza wanafaa waziite mahewa Jordan. Now uh, I, I know we should support innovation but kidogo pale sijaelewa hii kabisa maze. Haters wanasema for once wameleta invention ya kusikiza ngoma za pretty fish. Now but, but why would you need music coming from your feet? Maze think about the average distance ya kutoka kwa masikio yako mpaka kwa miguu. Unless ndio sasa home theater ya watu wafupi. <laughs> Unakaa tu hivi unasikia? Unasikia ngoma. Now as a musician imagine msia kisikiza ngoma zako kwa miguu. Ati sauti soul my foot. <laughs> Now <laughs> Eh hey, maze. Anyway, 
all in all, we have to give it up to this young innovator for creating uh, another style for people to consume content. Uh, we wish him all the best. And while the project is still under uh, development, Tunajua, Labda, he's on to something. And Vile Tumesema, wish him all the best. I have to tell you about a beautiful way to consume high-quality content for just 300 bob a month. Uh, you have access to world class movies and series, both local and international, courtesy of Showmax. Our guests on the show last week, uh, Betty Chalo, na Masi Chalo, uh, aka the, Chalo, the Kialo sisters, nearly correct you at Lembo, the Kialo sisters, Kwanza wakuna reality show, no masana on the platform ya Showmax, uh, in itwa Kialo Culture, which is now on their second season. And these are vibes you don't want to miss for anything. I'll tell you more about that later. Ebu Kwanza, I take you to New Zealand, where they, they are there civil aviation authority have resolved that moving forward they will be weighing passengers before they travel by plane as in basically from now on they want to know how heavy you are before you get on a plane which is an interesting contrast contrast na kenya maliwezi pandandege kama wesi mzito now <laughs> yeah, new zealand are literally redefining the concept of traveling light but think about that for a minute imagine you on a flight Alafu umepita kilo na 500 grams. Mazi, ah, mazi, nilijua hiyo motura ita niyaribia safari. <laughs> hey, mazi. Hey. Hey. Yes, na, 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 hiyo, na hiyo sheria ibaki tu huko kwa mandege, mazi. Wasijaribu kuileta kwa matatu. Ati unapima weight before ingie kwa mat. Ati edu, wee dugu. Nika mautaeda na taxi. <laughs> na siyo mina katao ingie gari, niratiri. Ama utaigia choo kwanza. <laughs> Eh? Tuone kama mambo itakuwa tofauti. Kwanza kwanza hizi safari za mbali watu wanaweza umia. Tunasimama na kuru 10 minutes na mtu asijaribu kukula ugali. Sina mafuta ya kupandisha mizigo kemede. Na na, 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 na kama anasema ukule ugali wede na SGR. But chill guys, you're safe. Hii sheria itafikia matatu. Kuna vitu mingi sana unaweza fanya kwa matatu lakini hauwezi fanya kwa ndege. Kama juice there's a guy wa uh, walikuwa anaenda ku South Korea manze uh, alishikwa. He had to be arrested because alifungwa mlango. A feat said to be impossible. 194 passengers are on board and they're getting battered by the intense wind. Moving on, we have a great show lined up for you. This topic could not have come at a better time. Renowned journalist and media personality Shiro Morioki started a very important conversation on the internet last week and she was kind enough to agree Kukuja to share the same with us on this episode. The topic is what to do after losing your job and why losing a job should not be a cause for shame. Now, I've, I've stated here before that Shiro is one of my favorite people in the media industry and also one of the wittiest ladies I've ever met. You loved her the last time she featured on the Wicked Edition and I trust that you will appreciate uh, how relevant and invaluable the conversation she has started is. I cannot wait to get into it so please trust me and join us on the other end of this short commercial break. See you in a bit. Yeah, Maze, welcome back to the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. I'm very excited because one of my favorite people is in the house Aww. and it's someone most of you love. Shiro Morioki is in the house. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Karibu san. Thank you. I'm one of your favorite people. Welcome. Yes. You, you yes. hide that well. No, I, no I, I don't hide it well. I talk I, as in, I don't know how to express how hard you've made me laugh huh? for the time oh, that I've met you Oh, I thought that sentence was about. going somewhere else. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you're going to get Welcome back to the show. Thank uh, you. Eh, kwa wale wase wajai on Shiro, if ne, you've never had a chance to listen to Shiro, today is your day and it's for a very special topic. How to survive after losing a job. Right. Why did you decide that that is an important conversation? You know, the thing is, when people lose their jobs, especially to retrenchment, yes. people think that it's something really embarrassing. And you haven't really done anything wrong, yeah? I think you should be embarrassed like, Kauli futwa job, juya wizi. Then yes. don't tell anybody. Go to the grave with that. But come on. Am I going to run around telling people I was fired for being a thief? No, but... So you can vie in the next elections. Ha! Huh. 
You're not exactly. wrong. Anyway, but I honestly believe that, um, you know, we need to take away the stigma from retrenchment, especially because it's happening so much right now. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we saw last year, Twitter, I can remember the way uh, the Twitter office in Nigeria was closed literally like two months after it was opened. And like you're excited having got this job and then all of a sudden you don't have that job. And those people did nothing wrong. It's just yeah. that there was a change of management and then things just happened the way they happened. Yes. Same thing with my situation, my previous employer, they decided to take a new strategic approach to storytelling. And then as a result, several roles were made redundant and I was one of them. And I strongly believe that job loss, yeah. especially if you've not done anything wrong, should not, should not be shameful. You've yeah. not done anything wrong, see me life. Life, life happens, yeah. The life. And my friend, I have, a, I have an evil friend, and it was Deno Spina. Uh, he says, he says, uh, there's different. something he says, uh, and I, I'll, I'll equate it. When you talked about how you lost your job, you mm -hmm. talked about a process right. they took before they let you go. Deno and Samanga, story at Vilevase Ufutu a job come Django. We will scam Kesho. Does the process, yeah. does the process help? If there's a process, you worked for an international media house. Yes. Does the process help? It does help. It helps you, especially if you know that something like that is coming, even though you don't know that you personally will be affected. Yes. It helps put in your mind that, hey, it's a business and yanze kujipanga. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, so we were told um, mid last year that, you know, there's this new digital first strategy that they want to start adopting and it might by then we're not speaking in like specifics we're saying that it might lead to certain roles being closed just uh, certain people being moved about but then of course because we are all adults you know how to read between the lines and that really did help it it, uh, it helps you make financial plans it helps you make your uh, set your mind you know psychologically and mentally as well like okay um if this was to hit me personally what do i do so even like you start Pangaing your finances from before, like, okay, there are things I need to stop doing. I need to start saving more money. I have to take things like retrenchment insurance. People didn't know that there's retrenchment insurance. By the way, if you don't know now, you know. Mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, there's getting something like retrenchment insurance, um, just basically tightening the bootstrap, sending out applications to other places, things like that. So it really does help. It's not like, like there you've mentioned that you now, and you know, it's happened, and then not just from Django. There are companies where you work a full day and then in the evening, after they've gotten, they've squeezed the last bit of sweat from you. Yes. Then in the evening, you're called to each other, like, hey, hey, come. And then they give you a letter. So I, I actually am very grateful that they gave us that time to prepare. On the job, there's the idea of you suspect that you could lose your job. Right. But when that, that is not there, we have most people who are like, oh, I hate this job. Like a spending job. Like you struggle with the job. Very few people love their jobs, mm. right? You only love your job. Most people only love their jobs when they're about to get fired. And <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's when you are like, hey, hey, Maze, I really need this. And that, that really does not register well with people who are not employed yet. People mm. who wish they can get that opportunity. Yeah. Like, uh, <clears throat> what, 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 what is your experience? How, when you go far back to when you, start, you, you, you first were looking for a job, mm -hmm. what was your experience? How much did you enjoy your job? And how does it affect you when things stop? Are you talking about this particular or just like from the, In from the jump from yes, the yes, beginning? Yes, 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 yes. You, like you're right, you know, like when you're out there hustling and trying to find a job, it's really incomprehensible for to you listening to anybody else saying, ah, my workplace is toxic. And then you're like, eh, simi hata ni pata your workplace, toxic or not. Yes. But I feel like it's also really unfortunate that because of that, people who are actually in a really tough working situation, now they get their plain silence because they're told, when your mother kukona when you're not after a job, you know. Ah, yes. So it's both situations are valid. And I, re I, I remember really looking for a job and I looked for a long time until I got to the point where I'm like, let me just start building myself on social media. Yes. Because, you know, these jobs are not forthcoming. And then from my social media is when these opportunities started to avail themselves, right? Yes, yes. <clears throat> and then even having said that, I have been in places where I was not... I'm really trying to be politically correct here because I don't, don't be. believe. This is the I don't believe edition. in banning. When someone puts you on the spot, you're wait, wait. You're just I ban that bridge. Will you come and employ me? You <laughs> say, Stop. You say you are just joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Dr. Kingori. Yeah. Can you do jokes? No, it's a good excuse. <laughs> no. Um, I think 
you know, when you're in a toxic work situation, that is really valid. And I feel that that is not on you as the employee. It is a responsibility of your employer to make sure you have a good working situation. Yeah. I'm sure there are people here who have been in situations where the only thing that has stopped you from punching your boss is because you have rent to pay and you're afraid of going to jail. Mm -hmm. Right? So yes. that's, that's the same thing. And it's the responsibility of employers to make working conditions for their employees good. If there's a complaint about a supervisor, that's, and it's a, you know, if it's, one, it's, if it's one complaint, you know, but if several people have complained about the same person and nothing is getting done, then you're perpetuating a toxic work environment. Uh -huh. If you're not paying people enough, if people are there like, Jesus Christ, I can't even afford a matter, people are walking home and they're employed. That is a toxic work environment. If you have, if there's favoritism in the workplace, a lot of siasa, or people are stabbing each other in the back in that workplace, and you as your employer, as a HR professional, you know about such things, and you're not doing anything about it, you're perpetuating a toxic work environment. And I think that is wrong, because even when I started this conversation on my social media last week, and I said, you know, that uh, even, you know, job loss can also be you only choking up where you are and you decided I'm done and need to quit. So that's also you losing your employment, even though it was a choice that you made. Okay. And so as a result of that, like I got a lot of um, uh, messages of people like, what? I'm working in this toxic, really toxic place. You know, my boss is like this or, you know, we're not, we're not heard. I'm not being paid well, like, like in this uh, tough economic times. Now go back to quit because what am I going to do next? Yeah. And I feel like even as we're talking about these conversations about retrenchment and job loss, we also need to talk about the people who are stuck in toxic situations because that is really important. Like for instance, if come on, uh, if I'm a dosi, and I remember when I started out when I was young, it was really tough. So instead of now when I, be, I, I become a senior person in that uh, organization, instead of learning from how hard it was, when I was new in that organization, whether I joined as an intern or entry level job. So I've joined that organization and things were really hard for me. And then I've risen through the ranks and I've become someone senior. So instead of learning, I'm like, if I suffered, then they must also suffer. Yeah. And I feel like that is attitude awesome. is also really prevalent. Okay. And we, it comes all the way from high school. You know, when yeah. people were being uh, bullied when you're a mono and then... <laughs> <laughs> by the way, just for context, his high school mate is here. I feel like we need to, <laughs> to unpack what that is about. But yeah, it's, yes. that comes from high school yes. where you, you will bully because even you, you were bullied. And so yes. when we carry these attitudes into workplaces, then it's not right. It's interesting, Shiro. That's uh, a lot to unpack for what you just said. First of all, I don't know, Kamam, the only one who noticed that Shiro is a cool kid. Mbaka na kiswaili. Mumeskeyo patia ifa mamudosi. Ah, no, 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 check it, check it. And it's also, I need you to confirm, kindly confirm, that being uh, paid less is a toxic work environment. <laughs> like you can go to the ATM, wangaliye yi pesa useme, hey, kazi mianza kukua toxic. <laughs> As in, it's, you, you, you picked it up very well from when you are somewhere that you get paid money that's not even enough to transport you or to facilitate you transport to go home. It's a toxic environment. Yes. These are things people don't talk about. Yeah. If I can't get to work and I can't go home, but what, what are we doing? That's why, well, you know, what is the reason why we, we work? We work to better ourselves financially so that we can invest, so that we can grow. Like my life is, um, it's not slavery, please. We evolved. We ended slavery in this country when we kicked out the colonizers, okay? There should yeah. be no more slavery. So like, if I'm going to work and my job is is for barely making ends meet, come it's on, bro. Like it's, I, I feel like people should be paid what they're worth. We, we heard Jero Teach say on the show mm -hmm. uh, some time back, and I mentioned this to you, and she said that she had been employed for 20 years, right? And she had nothing to show for it. Like she doesn't have money like you would hope to get money, right? Mm. And that for me was scary. How long do you need to be on a job so that it will be beneficial to you after you exit. Like you don't have to be scared of losing your job. 
you can mm. be well be well be, you can be you can pick up your life and move on to something else without being scared is it because of the comfort zone uh, that you live uh, in within certain standards because you're employed or does this mean that when you're employed you should always plan for your exit you know that question of yours has so many layers to it like even as you're talking i was trying to figure out how i was going to answer first of all like even when we talk about your is, is, is a specific situation yes. you know, i can't speak to it because i'm not i don't know how much she was earning i don't know what her lifestyle was like uh but you know my father god rest his soul used to say that um if you rely 100 so percent solely on um, employment, unless yes. you're those CEOs who are getting paid 10 million shillings a month or more, because they're there, they're people, you know, the people in this country that are making 30 million a month, every month, every month 30 million, me wouldn't know what to do, I'd be confused, mm -hmm. every time that money, I've only spent 200k, and then boom, there's another 30 million, I'm like, wait a minute, so unless you're making that kind of money, you're never going to be wealthy, you have to really think outside of the box, and I remember I said it in my video that my last job, because, you know, I was making some decent money, uh, I was doing what I loved uh, because I really enjoy being a journalist and especially being a journalist in that organization was a fantastic experience. So I really, I settled. I was like, see, there's a nice salary coming at the end of every month. See, I'm living in a house I like. See, I have my like small little car. What am I stressed about? And so even if you ask at the end of your question, when you say you have to plan for your exit, I think that's the most important thing. And planning for your exit doesn't should not entail you just sitting there and waiting for your salary every month and also like you said st setting standards let me tell you something those people that you're setting st standards were not thinking about you eh? how how often like do you sit down and ask yourself like even you i want you guys to ask yourself this how often do you sit down and you and you ask yourself i wonder what dr kingori is doing with his money today <laughs> i wonder where like your friend i wonder what if you have a friend called eric i wonder where eric is drinking today i wonder if he's drinking a uh, single malt whiskey Do, does that thought ever cross your mind nope. no no yeah. so when you now, <laughs> now you're, that is the chairman <laughs> chairman wanakamati wa rochafu that's yeah it. those are the people my mother calls village witches if you do that <laughs> Uh, yes. If I'm sitting down wondering where <laughs> Mozoni went to do her hair, yes. and I'm asking myself if she spent less than 10,000, it's very cheap. Am I not a witch? You are. Exactly. <laughs> 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 By the way, you said you are. I feel like... It felt a little personal. No, 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 it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's context. Yeah, but yeah, as, as, as I was saying, this story, I could set standards. It, you're setting standards for people who are not thinking about you at all. They're busy with thinking about, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to eat? Uh, there's this deal in Hijaiva. How do I make sure that everything comes together? They're not thinking about you. No one here has sat down and asked themselves where Shiromoriki lives and how much rent she pays. Yeah. Nobody cares. But, the, uh, but when I'm here thinking that I need to set standards because I work for this organization, I have to be driving this car, I have to be paying this amount of rent, I have to be living in Lovington. Then after I've set standards for all of you guys on Instagram, I'm left with exactly 100 shillings to eat please uh we cannot have enough of shiro in one episode but oh. the good news is uh she's online now and um i believe she's best place to tell you yes. where to find her content because so, you can listen to shiro all day i am at shiro morioki twitter uh shiro morioki on facebook shiro morioki on instagram i also have a podcast uh we've actually just recorded our fifth episode and we're launching at the end of june uh with the charles Ouda. i think if you watch um salem on uh, Showmax and you watch Second Family on Showmax, you've seen him on there. So he's my business partner and that's, we have a, a podcast called The Undiscovered Podcast. We'll be looking at arts, music and culture in Nairobi and around Kenya and hopefully around Africa. Just talking to these, you know, these musicians that, you know, they were saying that it's very tough to be a musician because how many billions of songs are dropped every day? Yeah. Sindio. And so there's so many great talents that go under the radar people True. don't know them and yes. so we are discovering those artists and giving them a platform so if you're, you believe you're a great artist you hit me up send me a dm and we could have you on our podcast really soon very good vibes what my coffee ashiro was it
Okay. Asante sana. And as you look for Shiro's partner on Showmax, uh, Showmax is also a partner on the show and they have very, very good vibes and it's very, very easy uh, to access content to Showmax. Uh, Showmax.com and for 300 bob only you have access to international standard quality of content. Movie Noma Noma, uh, <coughs> as in ma, ma local Zauku, za Kenya, so ma, ma movies enye zime shootiwa ni kama za kina James Bond. Ata uneza pata ma James Bond zikuko. They have a very affordable package and uh, tumesema content creation is the next big yes. thing. Uh, you, uh, kama uko interested in content creation, unafa uone pia malizo content zinaekwa, zimefanywa aji. Otherwise, Thank you very much kwa kukaa mshoe yetu. Thank you for having me. Always good vibes. Always. We hope utakuja tena na tena. <laughs> always. Always have fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now next week we are actually setting up a conversation. Yeah, a gentleman I met tukiwa kwa one of the offices I had gone to see, na, see a friend. Alin introduced kwa concept inaitwa the capitalism circle. Why watu wanalia saa hii bila hakuna pesa lakini kuna mtu ananunua Range Rover. And he explained this concept to me so nicely that I can't wait for us to do that episode. The guy and it were Ed. I can't wait for us to do that episode because it's an explanation here why some people are poor. And I think it carries a highlight here. By then, Bona Missy Mekingi do. Labda ni ujui system. He has the system. And I believe it's an episode Munafa ku watch out for. Next week, uh, Nikisha Semaivo. That's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. Kingori.